This is the first section of chapter 13 on integration, and this is integrating x to the power n. Now, the first thing is that integration is the opposite process to differentiation. So it's the opposite of differentiation. So when we differentiate, what were the two steps? Well, when we differentiated x to the power n, we multiplied by the power, and then we subtracted 1 from that power. So when we started with x to the power n, we ended up with n times by x to the power n minus 1. Now, if we're going to reverse those two steps, we need to start from the last step and work backwards this way. So instead of subtracting 1 from the power, we're going to add 1 to the power. So let's write this down as we go along. So you've got x to the power n, we want to integrate it. So we add 1 to the power, like that. So that's, that reverses this step. Then the previous step, the first step in differentiation, which will be the last step in integration, uh, was we multiplied by the power. So here we've got to divide by the power. Now this is the power now, n plus 1, because we did that first. So we're going to divide by that power. And this is the process of integration, reversing differentiation. Now, there's something else we need to know about, and it's called the constant of integration, and we normally use the letter C to represent it. OK, now to see why we need this plus C, this constant integration, let's look at what happens when we differentiate. So if I started with this quadratic, y equals 3x squared plus 7x minus 3. If I differentiate it, I'll get 6x plus 7. Can you see that the negative 3 disappears? Do you remember? that whenever we have any constants, when we do integration, the constants disappear. Yeah, that always happens with the constants. Right, now let's say that I started with this and I want to integrate and work backwards. So I've got dy dx and I want to get back to y. So let's apply the integration. Well, I need to add one to this power um, and well, let's write down this. I need to add 1 to the power, so we're now working back to y. So that will be 2. So that be x squared. Then divide this by that power 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I get back the 3x squared. That's fine. OK, 7. Well, there's nothing there, but that's the same as 7x to the power 0. So if I add 1 to the power, this becomes x to the power 1. And if I divide that by 1, I just end up with 7x, which is fine. But I can't get the number back. There could have been a number here. I don't know what that number was. Well, I know what it was because I had that question. But let's say I didn't have that. That wasn't there. And I didn't know what this was. There could have been any number here. I don't know what it is. So I need to put a plus c here. And that basically represents that number that could have been there that disappears. And that's the constant of integration. And whenever we integrate, we always put this on the end to show that we appreciate that there could have been a number there at the, at the start. This could have been any number here. It's just disappeared. There might not even be a number there. But this shows we appreciate there could have been a number there. And in some questions, we can work it out. Now, there's one other thing just want to point out before we move on is look what happened to a number when we integrate a number or a constant it just becomes the constant with a value of x and that might be worth writing down that when we integrate a constant what happens is you just end up with the constant x that always happens with a constant. So we don't need to write x to the power zero there. We just know write a constant will just become a constant x. And then we've got this constant of integration at the end to show that, well, there was a number there, but it's disappeared. Example one, find y for the following. So part a, we've got dy dx equals x to the power four. So integrating will give us y. So we've got basically the derivative. We're finding what the function is. So we add 1 to the power. And we divide by the new power. So that would be divided by 5. Then we don't forget 
our constant in integration plus c. Now we can write this instead as y equals one fifth x to the power five plus c. So don't forget your constant of integration. Part b, we have dy dx equals x to the power negative five. So we add one to the power. So that would be x to the power of negative four and we divide by that new power put our constant of integration or we could write our answer as negative a quarter x to the power negative four plus c now what you can do is you can differentiate your answer just to check you get back to this again because differentiation for some reason is always easier so fifth times five one x to the power four yep so that's right and then the c will disappear here negative a quarter times by negative four that gives you one which is what we've got here and then take one from the power negative five then the c disappears so we get back to that so uh, differentiating your answer is a useful check to check that your answer is actually correct example two find f of x for the following that's also integration so we've got f dash of x equals 3x to the power of half. So to find f of x, we integrate, we reverse the differentiation. So we've got 3. Now, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to add 1 to the power. So that's 3 over 2. And I divide by the new power. So divide by three over two now i don't really want to leave it like that because that's a bit of a, a mess now we're going to put the plus c in before we tidy that up so i probably much prefer to write it like this so we need to work out three divided by three over two and that just simplifies nicely to two so all we're left with is two x to the power of three over two plus c so when you've got things like this don't leave them like that simplify it simplify them Okay, part B, we've got f dash of x is 3. Now, what did we say? What happens to constants? When we integrate a constant, it just becomes a constant x, and then we've got plus c. Okay, so that's nice and easy. A constant just becomes a constant x, and then don't forget our plus c. Example 3, given that dy dx equals 6x plus 2x to the minus 3 minus 3x to the half, find y okay so our dy dx is 6x plus 2x to the power minus 3 minus 3x to the half okay so we do this term by term so we're going to integrate so 6x now i'm going to write down like um on all of these uh, divided by the the power plus one and then i'm going to tidy up afterwards okay so I've got 6x, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So we'll tie that up in a minute. Then we've got 2x, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. And then minus 3x, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So write it like that first, and then simplify. So we've got 6 divided by 2, so we've got 3x squared. Here we've got 2 divided by negative 2, so negative x to the power negative 2. And then we've got 3 divided by 3 over 2, which is 2, and we've got the negative. So it's going to be negative 2x to the power of 3 over 2, and then plus c, our constant of integration. So you should now be able to complete exercise 13a on pages 289 to 290 of the textbook.